If you haven't decided which network to jump into, this video might help you because we're going to do a direct comparison between the Helium network and the MXC network. We're going to cover in this video the minor hardware specs. We're going to cover uh, the token comparison between the HNT and MXC. We'll also do deeper analysis of the minor specs. We're going to explain a little bit about the token network effect because it will help us understand the reward structure of both Helium and MXC. Also, how is the token of MXC broken into and how to calculate it? We'll also cover the two big subjects, which is the MXC fuel miner calculation and the MXC M2 Pro Health miner that was introduced a few days ago and how these two uh, calculations just changed my mind about uh, me purchasing the MX, uh, M2 Pro. So no further ado, let's jump into this video. So we're going to compare the Helium network versus the MXC network. So the Helium has over 58,000 hotspots deployed by uh, June 13, and the MXC have around 11,000. The proof, Helium uses the proof of coverage, MXC proof of participation, I included the company location because there was a lot of doubts in Reddit about MXC and whether is it a scam or not. So uh, Helium is in California, USA and MXC is in Berlin, Germany. And uh, if you guys don't know, Europe and Germany in specific, they have really strict regulations and laws and uh, regarding security and among other things. So I think it's pretty uh, solid. Um, in terms of the community participation, Helium, I give it five stars, MXC one star, and the reason is the, MA, the AMA that they did and the way they introduced the health miner uh, to the community was not uh, something that uh, they should be proud of. So let's talk here about the token comparison between HNT and the MXC. The number of tokens for the MXC are 2,600,000. 42 million and the helium is around 223 million uh, are the tokens capped yes for both uh, the having mxc doesn't have having uh, and we'll explain that during the fuel uh, um, breakdown and for helium it does happen every two years which is uh first of august in 2021 uh, the token mine type which Obviously, MXC here stands out. It can mine MXC, PTC, Bitcoin, Dash, and uh, Bulga Dot is coming soon next year. Helium only mines HNT. In this slide, we're going to talk about the Helium versus the MXC miners, minor hardware specs. We're going to take the Bobcat miner because it's the closest thing to the Match X. So, the processor for the Bobcat is Quad Core Cortex A35 CPU. And for the MXC, it's an NXP MCIM with an ARM Cortex A7M. The lower capacity A channels uplink, one channel downlink. Here, the M2 is really powerful. Two SX1302 chipsets, 16 frequency channels. The enclosure here with the Bobcat is sold separately. With the M2, is built in. It's ASA plastic IP66 rating and NT ultraviolet. The memory is one gig. DDR3 for the Bobcat and for the M2 is 256 megabyte. Storage memory is 64 gigabytes EMMC and for the M2 Pro it's an optional SSD. Now let's compare the MXC versus the Helium in terms of the technology as well. This is from the source www.mxc.org. So the TX speed for the MXC or the M2 Pro it's within five seconds, same thing with Helium, within five seconds. The interchain data, it's yes for MX, the M2, it's no, no for a Helium. The anti-collision, it's yes, it doesn't have it in Helium. And the target group, well, this is quite important, guys. The M2 can work for small devices and large machines. That means bigger data transfers while Helium is strictly for small devices. And that's why MXC can cover bigger machines, including cars and industrial machines and anything you can think of. And that's why this is important. 
See, the token value really comes first from the developers. So the more developers, they create a solid system that attracts users. The more users that come in, that's when the investors try to see this opportunity to jump and invest. And once they do that, because you have a good project, the, the value of the token increases. And then the more development goes into the project and you get more users and you get more investors, the more token. Now, token also is, for example, in the Bitcoin, what drove the value is it's because it's capped. And if the having the having that means you have limited of 21 million bitcoins and it drops by half on a single period, right? So that means it becomes scarce in a very, as you know, it's like gold. I need to dig more. I have limited quantity that increases the value. So this is important for us to understand the reward system. Here we're going to compare the reward structure of the helium versus the MXC. So this is split in the center, this is to the right and this is to the left. For the helium miner, the POC, POC challenges and challenges, it's 0.95% plus 5.31%. This is new for MX miners. If you guys don't know, uh, there's a proximity now. So up to 50 meters, your miner will not get penalized. Less than that, you have a 7% to count for. Witnesses, in Helium you get 21%, in MXC reliability is 20%. Uh, consensus group in Helium is 6%, which will be going away soon and replaced by validators. And for the MXC miner, the GPS, which is also new, and it counts for 5%. Security tokens is 34%, and the altitude is 5%, which is also new. The fuel and orientation for the MXC, it's 58%, and this has caused a lot of controversials, and uh, which we'll be explaining later on. And for the helium miner, is up to 32% for data transfer. So this is regarding the reward structure. So here we have the your daily earnings, that which is 10 to $14. So how does it calculated? Well, it's actually how many tokens are you getting? So it is, the, let's say $10. So $10 divided by the price of the MXC on the exchange. So let's say the price of the MX is $0.05. Cents. So you're going to get 200 tokens that are valued at $10 if you want to sell them on the spot. Now that's something I do not recommend because uh, we've seen a lot of people that did the HNT in Helium. They if they if they sold it last year, they were selling it for cents, and now the value of HNT is around fifteen dollars. So it's almost thirty to fifty x of the price of last year. So although you're gonna see, oh, I made ten dollars. What you're supposed to look at is how many tokens you got because. Imagine if the price of the token increases to $10. How many tokens you'll be getting a day? One token. That's it. So that's why it's also it's a good idea to jump on right now because you're going to earn more tokens because the price of the token is still cheap. So I hope this is clear. Uh, not a lot of people talk about it, but uh, I thought that I just um, you know enlighten you about this. This is where the fuss is all about the MXC fuel miner calculation. Let me explain it to you. What they're saying is once you turn on your machine, let's say this one belongs to Mr. John. So John started this machine. So Whatever this machine mines from the day he turns it on, it's recorded in the system. So let's say this is different periods. It could be years, month, whatever you want, just for the sake of this example. So in five months, let's assume that, that he generated 3,000 tokens. So what they're saying right now, 
if the 3,000 tokens are still in your dashboard or in your app, you did not sell it, you did not stake it. It's just you keeping it. That means your 58% performance in the fuel will be on uh, at 100% performance. So you get the 58%. If you sell half of these, 1,500, that means you will get 50% of the 58%, which makes you at 29%. If you decide to sell the 3,000 tokens, well, what that means is you're going to mine only 48% or 42%. Do you guys get it? So the, the, a lot of people also ask, if I'm going to start from day one and I don't have any tokens, no, the system will ask how many tokens did the did this device mine? And that's what counts. So if you count to, if you did 100, that means you should have 100 to get your 58%. If you mine 10,000, you should have still have 10,000. But then, I don't, I'm, a lot of people worry about this, but, um, you know, the, the reason it, it's going to drop, because in the slide before, I explained why you're going to mine less uh, when time passes by, because the price of the token will increase and therefore you're going to mine less because remember you you're not getting you're getting the value of ten dollars but the end is how many tokens you're getting so you'll be getting less tokens because if you look at the chart of mxc and the chart of hnt they're just going up so uh this is i think uh well explained i think you guys now should be able to connect the two and uh, the other thing guys this is not a financial advice and just for educational and entertain entertainment purposes and uh, let's go to the next slide i created this extra slide so i can explain this and elaborate more about the mxc m2 pro health minor so these percentages are affected relatively so if your devices or two devices are zero meters that means you lose all uh, 7%. If it's at 25 meters, that means you lose 50%, which is 3.5%, and so on and forth. And the same thing with the rest. Now, with the fuel, as we explained, now we have a capped coin, and we have the scarcity built in, because people that have this will not sell their tokens. Why? Because if you sell, that means you're going to lose the 58%, which is something you're not going to do at least for the you know two or three years maybe five years that's why uh short-term uh investors uh i don't advise them for this even if uh people that are thinking of borrowing the money to buy this that's not a good uh thing you don't expect your return uh to be the same because you're going to be losing uh 58 percent because what you're going to do is borrow the money mine the tokens after eight months you that's the return of investment you're going to sell these tokens to pay back somebody and from there and on your miner will only generate 42 percent assuming you have all of these uh, uh well optimized however do i think it's a good structure yes i do um, and as we explained the price of the token will increase and therefore you're going to get less tokens so let me explain this in this chart so let's say in the first year, your miner generated or mined 15,000 tokens. The second year, your miner will have the 15,000 that you got from the first year plus 10,000 that you generated on the second year. So the third year, you're going to have 15 from the first year, 10 from the second year, and 5,000. So in total, you'll have 30,000 tokens. But uh, you're gonna you'll be making less. So maybe after ten years, if the price of the token MXC token is a hundred dollars, you'll be getting zero point one token. So for you, if you have, if if it's let's say after ten years, you're getting zero point one token, and you already have accumulated over the years fifty thousand tokens. Now what's gonna happen is if you sell. 100 at the price of 100 you get ten thousand dollars but 100 from the fifty thousand tokens is nothing you're not going to get affected right so 
it is a good project for the long run for sure and I love the, the way they structured this because it makes sense. The scarcity is there, it's capped, the token effect will be there because nobody will be selling this. So if that makes sense why I like it, uh, then um, let's talk about how it backfired. Well, it backfired because the investors didn't know about all of this. On the contrary, they claim that there is no proximity issues. They claim there's no altitude issues. They claim there's no GPS. And people made the investment according to this, which is surprisingly not good. Because if you told me, hey, don't worry about it. We don't have altitude or proximity issues. Maybe I'm one of the guys who bought 20 of them. I invested $60,000. And decided to go with Match X, not with Helium, because I don't have these issues. Or well, I live in a basement. Well, the Helium would not work. So the Match X is a better option for me. And that's why I invested and bought 20 of them. And but trust me, there are people who invested uh, on 20 and 30 of them. And now you're telling them, oh no, we just found this problem. So that's why I understand why people are frustrated. And... Uh, People are really mad because they made investment, they borrowed money, and uh, you know, uh, for for MXC, which is surprisingly, is it like they didn't know? Uh, seriously, I mean, you have engineers. Any anybody with slight background of engineering, they will tell you if it has a GPS and it's using lower one, you need altitude, you need GPS. So. Is it possible they didn't know? I don't know. Is there a communication problem? For sure. And the second scenario, which is they knew about the health miner and they're they're going to introduce it, but why did they make why did they make that claim? That oh you don't have to worry about this. Our machine is robust. So that's where I stand. It it is not um, their approach was wrong. If they knew about it, it is a problem. If they did not know about it, it is a problem from an engineering point of view. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna. This is not a financial advice. Uh, this is just for entertainment purposes. But I think they made a mistake. I highly recommend uh, they follow Helium in terms of the community. Uh, Helium, when they introduced the HIP 15 and the HIP 17, it was by the community. The community said, and if you guys don't know what the HIP, it's a helium improvement processes. They are. They said we have a density problem. A lot of heliums are in one spot, like Manhattan. There were so many of them, and this is not good for the network. So they did not punish them, but they say, hey, if you're just gonna go there and deploy one there, you're gonna hurt the system. And this is by the community. So if MXC came to the community and was like, hey, we have some problems in the network, we need to discuss it. Let's find a way to resolve this. I think they would have been in a better place. Although, uh, it would still backfire because people that invested, but it's not. it would not be as bad as it is now. I encourage MXC to hire or put somebody on board that has um, community capacity building uh, to see how they can move on with the community. Uh, I would also recommend they bring in someone with communication backgrounds. Uh, so I think they lack the community and communication capacity in their board members because what we saw was um, not professional, to be honest. And um, the, although they're trying to fix things around, but uh, that's why I, I have not decided to buy one, but I'm definitely looking at buying the MXC token uh, because I don't know, I, I feel like just keeping my tokens forever is not something that I want. I don't know. I'm just uh, thinking out loud, but uh, tell me what you guys think. But I'm definitely going for the MXC token as a personal uh, approach, an investment. Again, these guys, uh, tell me what you guys think. Are you still mad at these guys or um, you're, you think it's, it's good for the network anyways and you're willing to sacrifice a little bit? Um, that's all I have to say. Um, if you guys are um, interested uh, in learning more, please subscribe. 
hit the bell button and the like button and we'll see you in the next video